And then in Psalm 59, verse 16 and 17, I want you to know what David prays for help from the Lord. He says, Lord, help me to sing of your loving kindness every day. Be sure to download the note card you'll find in the video description, a link to the note card, and follow along with the lesson, fill it in. It'll be a record for you of what you have learned in this lesson from the Bible. And I'll, by all means, get your Bible. Go get your Bible. How many of you have a Bible? I always ask that question. I always like to see the Bible. So get your Bible. Follow along. And if you like this sermon, ring the bell. Also, uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Ring the bell to get a notification of when new content is added. If you want to follow us on social media, links to our social media account are in the video description. So now, let's jump into the sermon. If you would please, be getting a Bible and turning to Psalm 54. That's today's reading from God's Word. Psalm 54. O oh God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. O oh God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth, for strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Selah. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies in your faithfulness. Put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good, for he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. One of the things I, pre I appreciate about some of the Psalms in the Psalter is that we are supplied with a little background information about the circumstances surrounding the particular Psalms. From Psalm 52 to 59, five out of eight Psalms give us a superscription concerning what was going on during the writing of the Psalm or what inspired it. If we look at this Psalm 54, we just read above it a mescal of David when the Ziphites came and said to Saul, is not David hiding himself among us? This psalm and the situation surrounding it can be traced back to 1 Samuel 23 as David is being pursued by Saul. So what we want to do in this lesson from our continuing series, our daily Bible reading for 2023, as we read through the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, we want to take a group of Psalms, Psalm 52 through 59, and we want to look at the circumstances of Psalm 123, and we want to look at this uh, at the background of these Psalms. And of course, Psalm 54 is not the only psalm to have such a background. We have entitled this lesson, The Christian Soldier's Prayer. What does a soldier of Christ need to be praying for? Psalm 52 to 59 all seem to have a commonality to the theme, to the theme of the psalm. In Psalm 52, for example, it is set while David is being pursued by Saul and David's location is given up by Dog the Edomite, not Dog the bounty hunter, but Dog the Edomite in 1 Samuel 22. Then looking at Psalm 53, 
a closer replication of Psalm 14 that speaks about the foolish person who denies God and seeks after his own desires, which are corrupt and abominable. Psalm 54, David's location is revealed to Saul by the Ziphites, 1 Samuel 23. Psalm 55, David's prayer to God, asking that he defeat his enemies and comfort him during the times of distress. Psalm 56, a request for God's help when David was fleeing from Saul and found himself in Gath. 1 Samuel chapter 21 relates to the incident. Psalm 57, Another request of David to God when he was hiding in caves as he fled from Saul in 1 Samuel 22 and also in 1 Samuel 24. Psalm 58, David acknowledges the wickedness of men and requesting that God destroy them to stop their evil ways. And then finally in this section, Psalm 59 was written toward the beginning of Saul's pursuit of David, 1 Samuel 19, verse 11. Saul was jealous of David's prosperity and sought to have him killed by any means necessary, 1 Samuel 18, verses 14 and 15. So do you see the commonality among these psalms? They seem to all be songs directed towards the idea of asking God for help during times of strife and warfare. As we know, David was not just the eventual king of Israel, but he was a mighty warrior. He was a soldier for the Lord's people and army. And we can learn much from him in these psalms he wrote while being a soldier in the midst of battle. We, like David, are soldiers. While we might not be literal soldiers engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat against a physical enemy, we are soldiers engaged against the evil forces of Satan as we strive for the haunts of men. We know well Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, in which Paul writes about our spiritual warfare and the weapons of our warfare. We know about the armor of God that helps us in the battle. And we ought to consider what is said in verses 18 and 20. Notice, if you will, verse 18, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Verse 19, also for me, that words may be given to me and opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. And then verse 20, for which I am an ambassador, Paul said in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Reading Ephesians 6, verses 19 through 20. Notice, Paul puts a lot of emphasis not just on equipping ourselves for warfare, but he also stresses that we be a people who are constantly praying and petitioning God for strength, perseverance, and boldness, not just for ourselves, but also for all the saints engaged in this battle. But what sorts of things ought the Christian soldier be praying for. I think we can learn some things that would be profitable for us to pray for based upon the things that David mentioned when he wrote the Psalms under these stressful conditions this evening, as we look this evening at them. Let's take some time to consider what the soldier of Christ's prayer ought to be and what we can pray for that will help us in our battle against Satan and the evil forces we battle against in this life as we look at the Christian soldier's prayer. In Psalm 52, I want you to notice here and also in Psalm 56, 1 through 4, 
Notice, if you will, he says in Psalm 50, he says, Lord, help me to trust in your loving kindness and not in the abundance of riches. It can be easy for us to take this type of language from David in Psalm 52 and make application solely on how we ought not to trust in earthly riches. We know it will be, it will let us down because it's temporal. Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 19, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on the earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Then he says in verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Reading Matthew 6, verses 19 through 21. But let me also add in what David says in Psalm 56, beginning in verse 1, where he says, Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me all day long, and attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. He said, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? Reading Psalm 56, verses one through four. In God, whose word I praise, he says there in verse four. Times when we will be fearful, there's times we will be because we look around us and we recognize that our foes are numerous and mighty. It might be that we take some lumps and suffer some kind of setbacks because Satan is formidable. Verses one and two, he says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt doing abominable things. He tells us, in that passage of scripture there. There are times when we will fear. Verse four, three and four says, they have all fallen together. They have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have those who work evil no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon God? David sought God's strength in prayer and we would be wise to do the same. Then we find, Lord, David prays, Lord, help me to be one who understands and seeks after you. Psalm 53 and verse two. David begins his psalm by speaking to the foolishness of the person who denies that there is a God. In Psalm 53, 1, where he says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt, doing abominable things. He says, There is none who does good. They're corrupt. David wants to be like the man who God seeks to find. He wants to find those who understand that there is a God. He is alive. In him we live and we survive, like the song we sang by A.W. Dicus. God looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand who seek after God. Satan would love to distract us in this battle with anything that this life has to offer. But this prayer begs God to help us keep our focus on him, his will for us, striving for godliness and righteousness in this life. Then David prays, Lord, stop those who seek to do evil. We find him praying this in Psalm 54, 4 and 5, Psalm 58, verses 10 and 11. He says the same prayer. While we often verbalize that God hates sin, but loves a sinner, which is very much true, God greatly desires for the sinner to repent and be saved. Notice, if you will, 
2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, he said, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises. Some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. The righteous in Psalm 58, 10 will rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He will bathe his feet in the blood of the wicked. Mankind will say, surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God who judges on the earth. He states that the righteous will rejoice when they see evil men brought to justice. We should be glad and we ought to pray to God that evil men will be stopped in their evil ways. I know that might seem strange at times because we want the best for all people, but sometimes the obstinate evil man who has refused God's way simply needs to be stopped. In these Psalms, David shows us here that as soldiers, we can and ought to pray to God for the wicked men to be stopped so that others will not suffer at their hand. Then David prays, Lord, help me to find peace in the midst of strife. Psalm 55, verse 4 through 8, 16, verse 18, and in 57, verses 1 through 3, he makes that request. Any soldier who has experienced the heat of battle knows the stress that it puts on the mind as well as the body. Not knowing what each day will bring can be exhausting. Again, we might not be engaged in a literal battle, but many of us are well aware of the exhaustion that can come from being caught in the heat of battle against sin, Satan and the temptations that present themselves in this life. There might very well be times when we feel as David did when he wrote Psalm 55 and verse 4 where he said, My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling come upon me and horror overwhelms me. And I say, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Yes, I would wander far away. I would lodge in the wilderness, Selah. I would hurry to find a shelter from the raging wind and tempest. We might want nothing more than to grow some wings and just fly out of the situation. Unfortunately, that often just isn't an option, and David knew this. So what would he do instead? He said that he would call upon the Lord. He might complain and murmur, but he would do so into the ear of the only one who could bring true peace and comfort. He knew that God alone could bring him peace in the midst of strife. Psalm 55 and verse 16, he said, I would hurry to find a shelter from the raging wind and the tempest. He says there, and then in verse 17, he says, but I call to God and the Lord will save me. And then he says, evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage for many are arrayed against me. And then we find in the next psalm we referred to, in verse 8, he says in this psalm, he says, I would hurry to find shelter from the raging wind and tempest, 55, verse 8. Notice in Psalm 57 and verse 1, he says, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge in the shadow of your wings. I will take refuge till the storm of destruction passes by. Verse 2, he says, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. 
He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. Selah. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. There is only one place to go when the going gets tough, and that is to the wings of God where his ever loving kindness dwells. And then in Psalm 59, verse 16 and 17, I want you to know what David prays for help from the Lord. He says, Lord, help me to sing of your loving kindness every day. Finally, we conclude this prayer of the Christian soldier by considering how we can keep our mindset upbeat in the midst of struggle. We want to find peace, but we also want to find something that can keep up encouraged and upbeat as we battle along each day. So what can we do? David said that he would keep an upbeat heart by continually singing the praises of God each day. Notice verse 16. He says, but I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning, for you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. Verse 17. O oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you, for you, O oh God, are my fortress, the God who shows me steadfast love. Psalm 59, verse 16 and 17. David was keenly aware of where the strength he possessed came from. He knew that God supplied him with every good thing that could help him to avoid defeat at the hands of his enemies whether it be Saul or a Canaanite of some sort. Therefore, David's joy for his successes compelled him to sing of the Lord and to write the Psalms that he did that we have in our Bibles. What about you? Do we feel compelled to sing about the goodness of God? If not, then it might be that we need to pray for a more appreciative and upbeat mindset that will help us to give God constant glory for his loving kindness that we experience even in the day of our distresses. Like David, may we continually pray for God to help us sing of his goodness all day long. Now, David was a man who was acutely familiar with distresses and all sorts of dangers and battles in his life. The man who had sworn allegiance uh, to was after his life. Yet he turned only to God in prayer and song and persevered to the end. May we consider the Psalms of David and see where we might too be able to pray the words that were on his heart as we battle against Satan in this life. May God be praised and honored as we excel for his glory in the battle for the souls of men. With that, Bob Shurem. What must I do to be saved today? Well, the Bible tells us the gospel must be heard. Jesus in the parable of the sowers giving giving the parable of the soils, giving the, the meaning. He said, as for the good soil, they are those who hearing the word, see they heard the word, hold it fast in honest and good hearts and bear fruit with patience. It's what we must do, hear the gospel, bear fruit with patience. We'll know the truth, the truth will set us free, John 8, 32. The gospel must be believed. John, uh, Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and your household, the Philippian jailer was told. There were many other signs Jesus did in the presence of the disciples, John said, that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Sins must be repented of. Our lives must be changed so that we will walk with God. We'll walk for him, live for him, 
Jesus said, I tell you, no, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Luke 13, 3, and then verse 5. We find signs of repentance. The Philippian jailer took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Acts 17, 30, the time of this ignorance, God overlooked now commands all men everywhere to repent. We must confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, Matthew 10, 32, him will I confess before my Father, watch this, which is in heaven. Verse 33, but whoever denies me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. We find that we confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Romans 10. In verse 10, there must be scriptural baptism, Acts 2, 22, 16. Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Baptism is a burial, we learn, Colossians 2, 12. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead, and you who were dead in your trespasses in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Baptism, which corresponds to this, Peter said, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There must be growth as a Christian and faithfulness unto death. We're to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And how we do that is by adding to our faith virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control, steadfastness, steadfastness, we add godliness, godliness, we add brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, love. He says, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, find out what it's there for. Anytime you see therefore, find the reason. It's a conclusion to the preceding argument. Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then do not fear any of those things which you're about to suffer. We may indeed suffer one day, like he's talking about here. The devil will throw some of us into prison. We may be tested. We'll have tribulation. Complete tribulation. That's what the idea of the 10 days is, complete tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown, the stephanos, that's the crown, not the diadem, but the stephanos of life. We must obey the gospel. Second Thessalonians 1 and verse 8 talks about inflaming fire, taking vengeance of those who do not know God and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obey the gospel today, won't you? They're going to suffer the punishment of eternal destruction. Eternal, not temporary, eternal destruction. Away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might. And so that's important. Having our souls purified by obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brother, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Have you done this? We're saved by God's truth, not by our feelings. We're to enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And there are going to be many who enter it, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Now, do me a favor, download the note card that you find in the description of this lesson and fill it out as you listen to this lesson. If you listen to it again, I probably should have put that on the front end about the note card, but you can get it, get as many copies as you want, make as many copies as you want, tell your friends about this. They can come and listen. Bob's your uncle. Cheerio.
Thank you for joining us here on our YouTube channel, SPH Church or Spring Hill Church of Christ, Spring Hill, Louisiana. And we invite you to join us as often as you can. Uh, subscribe so you'll get a reminder, you'll get a notice of when we add content, which usually is every week, every Sunday morning, content goes on of our morning lesson and our afternoon pre-evening, we are meeting at four o'clock, so pre-evening, not evening, lesson, each week as we can. We, add the, we do our best to add the lesson. We're also on rumble.com with videos, archives are there if you don't find them here on YouTube. If something happens, we can't keep them all here, I don't know. Uh, Facebook, we have them on Facebook. You can join up with us on Facebook, Spring Hill Church of Christ, or you can join up with me at Mac Michael, M-A-C-M-I-K-E-A-L. That's my uh, Facebook handle over there. And you can join me there if you would like to uh, do so. If you're in the area, come join us for Bible study 935, morning worship 1045, pre-evening service, 4 p.m., Wednesday evening Bible study, 6.30 p.m. Come join us in person or online. With that, Bob Jericho, cheerio.